Welcome back to the San Diego Opera Podcast. I'm Nick Rabellis, and my guest today is mezzo-soprano Audrey Babcock, who is singing the role of Maria in Piazzolla's Maria de Buenos Aires. Welcome to San Diego. Thank you. Or is are we welcoming you back? Have you? You've, I, I haven't sung with this company before. No. But you've been to San I've Diego. I've been to San Diego. I grew up in Los Angeles. So. Oh well, then. Yeah. You're an old hand at this. <laughs> welcome, yeah. welcome Thank anyway. You. You've done Maria. A no, number of times? No, 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 this is my first. You've done Carmen yeah. a bunch of times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the characters are similar. Well, and that in they're a way. feisty and. Uh, and they dance all the way through the And they dance, the opera. yeah. So, <laughs> but that's about it. And that's kind of it, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so first time with Maria, tell me about her. I, The music is just wonderful. I, I love the score. Mm -hmm. But I have to tell you, I've. Uh, um, I haven't really approached the story and the language until mm -hmm. the last few months as we've been mm -hmm. preparing for this. It's a piece of work. It's it's really a little strange. Tell us a little <laughs> bit just about the language of the piece. Well, the, um, it's in Spanish and it's in the Argentinian dialect, and it's a sur it's a, uh, Ferrer was a surrealist poet. Horacio Ferrer, so, the librettist. Um, yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> so the poetry is is in this. Uh, timbre of sounds and emotions and not necessarily sensical words. Right. You know, um, it's like, it's hard to translate. It's as if you would try to translate E.E. E. Cummings. You know, you wouldn't, where he plays with, um, with our knowledge, with knowledge of the language in, in sound painting, and he uses some words uh, for what they sound like as opposed to what they mean. Well, and idioms that are and specifically yeah. Buenos yeah. Aires yeah. or Argentinian yeah. rather than Spanish. Yeah, like there's one, there's one phrase, there's one monologue that I have that is really referencing the Mary Magdalene, mm. but all it's talking about is the futility of the desperation of how how she has to live her life. Right. But the, the, the images um, that are brought about in his poetry would remind anyone from Argentina about Mary Magdalene, but I wouldn't know that unless I studied it, you know, because that's not a reference that is in my vocabulary. Do you think it puts a barrier um, no, for an American audience? Not at, at all? all, actually, because we're going to take it out of the poetry and we want you to experience it. I think very much the way Ferrer wanted you to as well is to just experience it. Just it's let just, it happen. It's an experience. And the way that John, our director, has um, formulated the story, he's extrapolated a story from the text. Uh -huh. The way he's personifying that, it'll be something that you just immerse yourself in and you enjoy it. Even a Spanish-speaking audience um, is not going to want to listen to every word and try to decipher the poetry in the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, when when you go to a poetry reading, like, you try to let it wash over you. I don't know how much spoken word people go to, but you try to let the emotion of the speaker and the words and the sense they give you. Rather than hanging rather on Rather than, every than word hanging and, on the words yeah. and trying to decipher what they mean. Just let, let it... Let the experience happen. We're going to take you somewhere. So. Well, and tango, I think, really supports that. Yeah. I mean, you have the bandoneon uh, that is just this instrument that I think it recalls um, the connotation. Every time I hear that instrument, I think of memories. You think of nostalgia. Mm. You think of, of like, underlying pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. sadness and story and family. Um, so... I think I think this is an emotional piece for sure, mm. <laughs> um, and I think just letting it wash over you is going to be the way to go. Who is Maria then? Maria is a a girl. She grows up from when we this production. She's going to be a child, and then she's going to grow mm. into an adult and have her own child. And um, she's someone from the outskirts of Buenos Aires who grows up in a very uh, abusive environment and escapes and goes to the big city where she thinks, you know, she'll be a big hit and she'll have this other kind of life and she realizes it's dirty and scummy and scary too and she falls in with the only way she knows, she, you know, she can make money without being educated and um, a, and the d dirty, scummy s city takes her, takes her to, you know, the same sort of environment she was trying to escape. Uh -huh. And um, 
I don't know how many spoiler alerts. Yeah, I, can I know give. because there's like there's a, <laughs> there's a wonderful twist. There's a wonderful twist at the end, and, and and I won't spoil it either because yeah, I, you know, we, I caught myself. <laughs> we love audiences to be able to take in a whole piece, of, uh, even even pieces like uh, Tosca and Bohem. Uh, I never ever revealed the ending. Oh, okay. I don't care how <laughs> well known an opera is. There's always somebody in the audience that doesn't know. Yeah. And, and can you imagine seeing Carmen for the first time? She does. And getting at the. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I and, can't help it. <laughs> and, and getting to the end, but not expecting. Yeah, I what don't know what that's happens. like. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't. I can't imagine. Tell us a little bit about you. Now, you 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 grew up in L.A. I grew up in L.A. and then I was in New York for twenty years, and now I'm back. <laughs> the end. No. <laughs> but you you are a Carmen. And yeah. You've done yeah. a lot of a lot of Carmens all over the world. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. Um, um, she was just my ticket. I don't know. Like I I love to dance and uh -huh. um, and I come from a theater background. Uh, so I am used to doing different things with my voice, and so I don't know. I just I, Carmen to me feels like a musical. Uh, and well, um, there's and I do the spoken dialogue. Yeah, I was just gonna one. say if you if you if you do the so, Oba Comique version, yeah. it, it is yeah. a musical. You know, there's and there's so a lot of dialogue. different sounds. I mean, I I love bel canto. I mean, I'm I'm an opera singer by trade and by heart. You know, but. Um, but Carmen uh, always let me harken back to like where I studied and mm. uh, theater, so and mix it with the opera because you can make different colors. You know, Carmen's not supposed to be pretty, right? You know, exactly. I mean, it can be, and it would be lovely if it was all the time. But I think it would also be a little boring. Yeah. So I like being able to use my voice in different ways, which brings me to Maria because it, Maria is really not about the singing; it's about color, yeah, and yeah. texture and. And it's about playing with sound. Mm. Yeah. So you're having fun. Yes. <laughs> Good. I'm yes. so glad to hear yes. that. Yes. Well, we're going to have fun watching and, oh, and I hearing. I'm, I'm looking so forward to it. It would be my tango dancing debut. Yay. <laughs> That's great. You're getting lots of training, I Woo! assume. Yeah. Because the director, John, is uh -huh. a choreographer. Yeah. So yeah. that's yeah. convenient. Yeah, and he and I have worked <laughs> together before. He and I have danced together before, so oh. so we're having fun. Oh, terrific. Yeah. Well, welcome again. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here. You bet. And uh, looking forward to seeing you. Thank you. <laughs>